All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna talk about a fig called Long de Oot. And um, so we've covered this fig actually quite a bit in the past. We've done different fig reviews on this. And I have to just say the information that I've been able to learn about this variety has changed. And we've observed quite a big difference between uh, the performance this year and in prior years uh, due to actually one very simple thing. It's been pretty insane. Um, the other thing I want to mention before we get into this video is actually I'm wearing a hat right now that my friend Elena sent me. Um, it's a Figaholics hat. It's pretty, uh, pretty fitting. And she's actually selling some of those hats. If anybody's interested, you guys want to um, you know, purchase a hat from her. I think uh, I'll put that link down in the description. I know there's been some, I think, on Figbid, but she may have a different link. And so I'm going to get that link from her and then put it down in the description of the video. Uh, of course, I should probably be making my own hats as well, but um, they're pretty cool hats, honestly. I think they're very, 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 very fitting of, uh, you know, of what I'm doing here on the channel. Uh, and probably many of you guys are. So here's what we got today is this long de oot fig and it is uh incredible it is this year been very very tasty this is certainly i think uh among the better tasting figs that you can grow reliably here um it is an early variety so that has not really changed um it produces very large fruits they're very very sweet they even this year have a really nice berry flavor to them. Um, almost none of them have split. And in the past, it's been the kind of the biggest difference between this year and the last and prior years is that it seems like to me, the fruits that form on the suckers that come up from the base is of an inferior quality. And for whatever reason, uh, I guess because there's so much energy from all these suckers that typically come up and that those branches have so much energy that the fruits are rather different. I don't exactly know what it is. I, I'm not really able to quantify it, but I've noticed this with uh, my LSU Tiger, my LSU Huye, uh, LSU Champagne, uh, Long de Oot. Uh, quite a few of these trees that I've had in the ground for uh, an extended period of time have now survived the winter um, again, without any protection this year, it's pretty amazing, six degree low. And as a result, they produce fruit very easily on these uh, new branches that came out from the growth from last year that survived. Uh, when it is coming from a sucker, it's a lot more difficult because of that difference in the hormones. They're kind of like water shoots. They have so much energy. They just want to grow and grow and grow. There's a lot of photosynthesis. And I kind of just think that's the big difference. It's just the difference in the hormones and also the level of photosynthesis perhaps in that particular branch. I think it is definitely very, I'm sure a lot of you guys have observed this as well, that the individual branch that the fruits form on can be drastically different than other branches. Uh, so if one particular branch, let's say this one here in front of me, is very unhealthy, the fruits may be smaller, a bit disformed, just very strange in many different ways. But if the branch right next to it produces fruit as well, it's tip and it's a lot healthier, you see a lot better fruit quality that way. Size, just in general, it seems to be more representative of that variety. So I think the same thing happens that when you have a... Uh, you know, a tree that's producing a huge amount of fruit on a sucker, or not a lot of fruit on a sucker, and there's a lot of energy, I should say, because there's so many leaves, uh, because it's so vigorous, um, you just end up having a difference in fruit quality. And so Long de Oot here has exhibited that. And so this year I'm seeing much uh, smaller fruits, although this is still a very large size fig. <sighs> Uh, this is probably 75 grams, as most of them, I imagine, are about that. Um, last year and prior years, uh, they've been like almost double that. I would say they're easily 100, 150. And because they're so big, because there's so much photosynthesis on those branches, uh, the fruits are just massive. 
I think that's all it is. It's just that they, because of all that excess photosynthesis, it just gets diverted into those fruits. So here's a really good example of that if you had a few amount of fruits on any fruit tree, well, the fruits are typically gonna be larger, right? If you had a, a larger amount of fruits, like on a peach tree, you have to thin out those fruits to make the other ones larger. And so the same thing happens with figs. It's no different. So now that we have like a, the appropriate level of photosynthesis, the fruits are the right size, they're not splitting, and they're of a much higher quality. And so I don't know exactly, again, I don't know all the dynamics. There's probably multiple things happening here at once. Could also be also that we had a, a drier year, we had a drought. But just in general, the point I'm trying to make here is that the information that we've been going off of in prior seasons about this variety has been inferior, has been wrong um, compared to what is really representative of this tree now that it's survived the winter and the fruits are forming on more appropriate branches that probably most of you uh, will be seeing in your own yard. Uh, so the same thing's being said for you know LSU Tiger, LSU Champagne, um, Stallion, um, you know, uh, what was the other one? LSU Huye. There are so many of these varieties now because they survived the winter are behaving totally different because of that difference in the photosynthesis, I think. So anyway, the fruits are amazing this year. There is one downside though. And because of the fruits no longer splitting and turning into these water balloons as this variety had been in the past, um, the past few years, I've grown it in the ground. When I grew it in a container, there was no issues. Fantastic fig. Planting it in the ground and relying on these suckers, it just seemed uh, a lot worse. Now this is quite a dark red there in the center and the outside's a really nice, almost purple, uh, brownish, darker looking fig actually. Um, so this is a really nice fruit quality. And uh, I had some off my friend Dom's tree, who I planted the tree for him in uh, near the Jersey Shore. And so I told Dom, it's the same tree as mine, by the way, uh, just an air layer or a cutting I rooted, planted it at his place. His is about the same size as mine here, minus all the crazy suckers in the back that are almost six feet, seven feet tall. Um, and his was producing fruit about a week earlier, two weeks earlier than mine because of where he's at. And also it was just as good as this, just absolutely amazing, blown away by the quality. So I'm like, oh, I can't wait to try some of these off my own tree and see, you know, the similar results. At least I was hoping that was gonna be the case. And he had the same thing. His tree survived the winter, you know, it didn't produce fruit on the suckers. And it's kind of going along more along the lines with my theory of, like I said, the difference between fruit that produces on the suckers and fruit that produces just on different branches in general. Um, so anyway, that's been amazing. But the, the one bad thing about it is it has been the skin. And so I've noticed that the skin is really this one variety, this variety's one weakness. It produces a lot of fruit at an early date. They're a good size. They taste amazing. They actually are not splitting at all, um, but the skin acts like a sponge on this particular one. And so my objective now, after noticing that this, the skin is terrible and it absorbs a lot of water after it rains into the fruit, is that I wanna try to find one that has a better skin. When we did the video on the Long de Oot Breba, uh, we mentioned that we want to find one that's smaller, that doesn't split, but even this one doesn't split now. Pretty confident with that going forward. And so now we notice the skin, and really my main objective now is to, I want to find a couple long to oot types from different sources and see if one has a better skin quality to it. Because I'm telling you, this is a, a great choice for people in short season climates, um, but if you have like a lot of rain coming in, I, I just would not recommend this. I, don't, I think that this, because of that skin quality, and you wouldn't even be able to tell from touching it, the, the skin feeling the outside of the skin, it feels a bit soft. It feels like, you know, Smith. It feels like Petit de Argentile, and those are really good. 
So you would imagine that the skin might be good just by the feel, but it's not the case. And, and anyway, I showed you guys the, the pulp on the inside a few times now, but it is really dark red. So let me try this. I'll be able to describe hopefully the, the flavors I've been rather have kind of a sinus problem. I don't know if you guys noticed. Um, yeah, so insanely sweet. This is definitely the sweetest, one of the sweetest figs I've got. This one has like a cotton candy flavor, believe it or not. This is so amazing, actually, this fruit. You could tell the, you know, the sweetness charts it's off the, uh, off the scale. And then it also has this year for really the first time I've had it since probably I had it in a container actually has a nice berry flavor. And so this is not only figgy, but extremely sweet. First time I'm picking up that cotton candy flavor guys. Ridiculously sweet. It almost seems like the, the sugars in there have crystallized a little bit. Overall, one of the best tasting figs. Not even kidding. I, I would have never said that in the past. It's right up there. You know, and I really like the, the, the higher sweetness figs. I got a sweet tooth. And uh, so for me, that's a huge, huge benefit, I guess, for my preferences. But the texture is really nice. You know, it would, it would pl please a lot of people, that texture, because it's rather juicy, but it's also quite jammy. And so it's thick. It's got everything going for it. There's some of the fruits that are left on the tree. Here's another one that probably will be ready tomorrow. I may have to pick it tonight or today at some point because uh, it's gonna rain tonight. And this half an inch of rain or so probably will ruin the uh, quality there. It may ferment, it may come out here tomorrow and there'll be fruit flies all over it. And so that's just what happens when you have this poor skin quality. I wish I documented it a little bit. Um, you just have to take my word for it. But uh, that water seeps into the skin and m messes up the bricks. And then when the bricks is low enough or not high enough, I don't know what the number is exactly, but they'll, they'll start to ferment very easily at that point. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this one. This was a, a long to oot update, a little bit more accurate information where we're kind of at with this fig. And um, I thank you guys again hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. I think we actually have a blog post. We may have a blog post on this one. If not, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make one. So, all right, guys. See you soon. Take care.